My name's Lou, uh, pronouns are they, them. I'm a workplace culture enthusiast, really passionate about uh, inspiring and empowering the individuals and organisations that I work with. Um, and I'm currently doing that work through my work in the shared workspace industry. Brilliant. So yeah, the people experience and culture is so dependent on the company you're in. So can you tell us about work life? For sure. Um, so we are a B Corp certified shared workspace provider. Uh, we have nine locations in London and then uh, two regional spaces in Reading and Manchester as well. Um, our mission is really about infusing all of our members' work lives with a lot more happiness um, and cultivating spaces uh, where people can be their whole selves. Um, and, you know, work life can often be associated to your work life, but it's really about um, amalgamating the two um, and there not being really a, a difference between work and life um, and enabling people to feel that they can be the same in essence in both work and life i really appreciate the way you articulated that and people experience um can mean the people experience for the employees or like uh, like the core team but in your case it also means the member experience for all the your 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 members of work life so i saw that you did a journaling workshop and I was like, that's so cool. So <laughs> could you start by sharing what is journal journaling and how did you get into it? So journaling to me is a very, um, it's a very free practice. Um, it's about really cultivating a space for yourself um, where you can put whatever it is that you need to on a page. Um, I think it's important to really validate whatever it may be that you're feeling in any given moment. Um, and I think for me, journaling is when you feel able to elevate um, your sense of self. I think it's a really great space to be able to do that. But it's also a space where you can completely validate um, things that you're feeling that may not feel so great. Um, and it's about really giving into both um, and yeah, just kind of cultivating that space for yourself where everything is, everything is valid. And I got into it uh, when I started um, going to therapy about two and a half years ago. Um, and I didn't feel safe enough um, in my early stages of therapy to kind of to take my therapist all the way there with me um, and I think it was really important um, to cultivate that space for myself where I could take myself all the way there um, I'm definitely all the way there now with my therapist um, so I kind of have the best of both worlds in my journal and I have that space um, that I've you know, me and my therapist have um, worked on. Uh, but yeah, that's that's how I got into it. And that's my my take on what journaling is. It's um, brilliant to hear how valuable it has been and how uh, inclusive it is. So for different people at different times, um, mm -hmm. different channels will work best. So how did you go from there to running a workshop on journaling at work? So um, it was actually in the run up to Mental Health Awareness Week. Um, and myself and my colleague were thinking about the, the kind of events and activations that we were gonna put on for our members. Um, and really um, thinking about what was gonna be truly valuable and um, for, for that week and you know thereafter really thinking about making space for really honest um, honest and open conversations to take place and uh, journaling for me is you know like I say one of if not the biggest tool that I have found really useful in um, in my life 
Um, so I decided because it was something that I feel pretty well versed in. Um, it's something that I have gotten a lot of friends into. Um, and I actually talked to a friend of mine about it and she was like, you know, you got me into journaling. You are the reason that I journal and you're the reason that I now tell anyone who's trying to explore the way they're feeling to journal. Um, so you are the perfect person to do this. Um, because I think there can also be that kind of imposter syndrome of being like, oh, well, I'm not the right person to deliver this message. I'm not a professional. But I think a lot of the time, the most important thing we can do is speak to our own experience and speak to what works for us. Um, and that's what kind of led me to going, yeah, I'm going to run this workshop. Um, and I'm going to try and give people a little a little nugget of what works for me. And then hopefully in turn, make space for people to make some more space for themselves. I love that you l turned an idea into it actually happened. So mm. what did it involve? What did that workshop? What happened in the workshop? So um, I'd bought everyone a blank journal, um, regardless of whether they journal already. Um, I think for me, I have a very end to end process with journaling. Um, and every time I start a new journal, I go through the same process. Um, so it started literally from um, kind of setting the tone on the first page. Um, and I think a really important way to do that is um, thinking about three affirm affirmative phrases um, that you feel are important for you at this time in your life. Because I think my journals for me are a snapshot of where I was at that time in my life. And I think when you come to that first page, it's you want to read something that you know you're always gonna need to hear. Um, so whether that's, you know, I am enough or I am kind, I am honest, you know, there's a whole multitude of things that you could say to yourself. Um, so we worked through that and then my second process on that first page is to think about something that you would say to little you. Um, and really pay attention to the tone of voice that you are using when you are talking. Oh, we've gone into darkness. Um, when you are talking to that uh, younger version of self. And in that you are gonna uncover something really important that you want, want to say to that younger version of self, but also in times where you may not be being so kind to yourself, um, you kind of come back to that tone of voice that you would have spoken to that younger version of self in. Um, and coming back to those affirmative phrases, coming back to, you know, I wouldn't have talked to little me like that. So let's not talk to me, me like that, um, because that's not helpful. And then kind of running through my process um, in like day to day journaling. So, um, my focus is very much on free writing and, you know, really trying to tap into whatever it is you may be feeling on that day and just keep writing because you're tapping into something and just being really open with yourself, really honest. Um, and then coming back around and, you know, practicing a little bit of gratitude. And for me, this is a step that I um, really emphasize that this might not always feel authentic to be genuinely grateful for something. And that is completely fine. If you don't feel genuinely grateful for anything, um, that's fine. And I think, you know, toxic positivity is so rife in the wellness industry and just in, you know, day-to-day -day culture in general. Um, but I, you know, also had emphasised, I think it is important to find the gratitude as well, even if it's small things like, you know, I'm really grateful for the person that smiled on me on the, uh, on the way to work this morning. Or I'm really grateful for the dog that I saw on my way to the shop um, and finding those moments of gratitude. And then in the final step is really uh, coming back around to where you were when you were really honest with yourself and thinking again about th like three affirmative phrases that are either gonna 
affirm the way you're feeling and um if you're not feeling so great it's about saying you know i'm exactly where i'm meant to be or somewhere around there um or you know it can be someone that's going to take you to that like next level where you can say you know i am powerful or you know something that's going to give you that boost um so i kind of yeah we i took people through this process talked them through it and then um had intervals in between where people were writing and then when it came around to um practicing the process it was just about you know kind of saying we're just gonna make space for each other now um i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna journal with you um i'm here if you want to ask any questions um but equally let's all just go wherever we need to go and then we'll chat about it after and we did um and everyone really went there and it was so so inspiring um and yeah filled me with such joy to see everyone be so supportive of each other so supportive of themselves um had some people that were new to journaling some people that had journaled for years some people that had journaled for years and hadn't been journaling um and it, I think, you know, everyone that I've checked in with has really kept up with the practice. Um, one of the most powerful bits of feedback that I got was um, a lovely member, Dawn, who came to me and said, you know, I haven't journaled for about three or four years and I'm back to writing for myself. Um, and thank you. And yeah, more than I really could have asked for. Um, and I think it just shows, you know, when you really can put yourself out there and talk about your experiences openly and honestly and what works for you um people really resonate with that um and then yeah kind of they'll go there if you go there with them um so i think yeah it was it was lovely it was really lovely i think it's so cool that you brought this into people's working day if someone following along thinks okay, I've heard about journaling and I've wanted to get into it, I just haven't known how, or mm. they're new to it. What advice would you offer someone who wants to get into it? I would say um, don't put too much weight on it. I think for me, when I found journaling, it was the first wellness tool that I actually felt wasn't attached to societal expectations or societal kind of norms of what we should be doing um and in order to feel good you have to go to the gym this many times a week and you have to eat this and you know you put all these expectations on yourself um it's a practice that you can do once a month you can do it once a year but the most important thing is just about sitting down with a page and just saying i'm going to be really honest with myself now and i know that in turn that's going to kind of, it's going to do the work. It's going to, it's going to take me wherever I need to go. Um, so I would say just go out, find your ideal notebook, one that you're going to want to write in. Um, and also don't be afraid of making mistakes. I've had entire pages of journals where I've just scribbled um, because that's sometimes all you need to do. And I think just all any, anyone is ever doing with journaling is making it work for them. So I think my biggest bit of advice is just make it work for you. When you first said that, people making it work for them, I thought that is such a good phrase. Um, that could be like the title of your book, the title of yeah. your journal, um, or your, your journaling series. Um, this is, I feel really fortunate that you shared this. Thank you so much. If, if people would like to have you along their journey with them or like follow your work, is there a way people can follow you? Yeah, I would love it. Um, if, you would connect with me on LinkedIn. That's probably um, where I post most of my work um, and I'm always open to conversations over there. Um, so I'm Lou Rutherford on LinkedIn.